This is the final video for chapter 10. I will spend some time just comparing the processes of mitosis and meiosis and going over some things that you should understand uh, as far as the differences go between these two processes. Uh, the first thing for us to talk about under mitosis is that this process is a cycle. So this is something that's happening um, over and over and over again, the idea that it goes from interphase through the four steps of mitosis to cytokinesis and then back to interphase again. Whereas something like meiosis is linear. So it's not necessarily going to go back to the beginning again. And um, actually once it divides and you end up with those cells with only half the original amount of DNA in them, those never go back through interphase or divide again. Those cells, uh, once you get them at the end of this process, that's the end of it. Uh, the next thing is just the number of cells that you get. For mitosis, you end up with two cells. For meiosis, you end up with four cells. Those cells are also a little bit different. Under mitosis, those cells are identical. And then under meiosis, the cells have variation. Remember that variation comes from crossing over, that step during prophase 1 where the two chromosomes kind of overlay each other and they pass some genes back and forth. So this way you don't just pass on like simply your father's chromosome or your mother's chromosome, it's actually a mixture of both your mother's and father's DNA that you pass on to the next generation. Uh, the second thing, or I'm sorry, the, the next thing just has to do with the uh, number of divisions that the cell has. In mitosis, the cell divides once. In uh, meiosis, then, the cell divides twice. Um, as far as what the cells are used for, mitosis is an example of things that would be in uh, what we're calling your body cells. So these would be things, you know, like uh, tissue, like such as uh, your skin, you know, uh, muscles, things like that, are all uh, cells that would reproduce through mitosis. Meiosis is only used for reproductive cells. The uh, final thing is a new term but it's something we've kind of talked about before. Uh, the cells that you're getting from mitosis are referred to as diploid, which means they have a full set of chromosomes. In relation to people, you know, this would be 46 chromosomes for humans. Now, for meiosis, you end up with a different kind of cell. These are referred to as haploid. I always think of haploid kind of as meaning like half, similar to the word half. So you've got half the original amount of chromosomes. This is useful for reproduction because you get 23 chromosomes from mom, 23 chromosomes from dad, giving you a full set of 46. So in people, we end up with 23 chromosomes in uh, the cells that are used in meiosis. Keep in mind, the number's gonna vary for different species. You know, things like fruit flies only have eight chromosomes. You know, it totally depends. Uh, things like plants are usually much more common, or I'm sorry, much more complex than, uh, than animals, so they'll have more chromosomes than animals do. But the, uh, the number doesn't really matter. The diploid number is always the full set. The haploid number is always going to be half of that, uh, that other number. So this gives you a nice little breakdown and a simple comparison of the things that are different between these two processes. I know we spent a lot of time on mitosis, so use that as a foundation for the things that are different in the process of meiosis. So this is just something that takes a little bit of time, a little bit of review. I apologize for my handwriting. It gets worse when I, when I make the, uh, the lines smaller, but that was the only way I could fit everything in there. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in class.